The battle on the bridge would commence. Three separate battles taking place all along the borders of the bridge itself. Kakashi having to hold his own against Zabuza. Chojuro, despite his age, was tasked with trying to maintain and keep up with Kisame. And, as for Naruto and Sasuke, the two stood back to back as they fended off against the masked shinobi. The one referred to as Haku. Haku was impressed with both Naruto and Sasuke. Their coordination and their teamwork was almost entirely in sync, although it was very clear that Naruto was taking the lead, even if just slightly. Sasuke wasn't too far behind. They were just able to match him in terms of speed, although Haku wasn't going all out, at least not yet. Meanwhile, Chojuro using his blade would clash with Samehada and with Kisame. Kisame keeping his eyes on Naruto. The sword spoke to him, and from what he could tell, that boy was not ordinary. If he didn't know any better, he would think that that boy was a tailed beast with the amount of chakra radiating from him, and Samehada could smell it. But still... If he's from the leaf, was he the Nine Tails? No, the chakra wasn't volatile enough to be the Nine Tails. Meanwhile, at Tazuna's home, while Cory slept soundly upstairs, downstairs things were getting a bit hectic. Gato had sent two of his thugs ahead of time to kidnap Tazuna's family and use them as hostages. Corey woke up to the rustle and tussle of the commotion downstairs, wearing nothing but a baggy t-shirt, shorts, and her hair being wildly unkempt. As she walked down the stairs, she yawned, asking what all the hubbub was about, only to see two swordsmen holding swords, respectively, to the throats of both Inari as well as Tsunami, his mother. Don't get any bright ideas, little girl. We know who you are. You're one of those leaf shinobi. They're gonna come with us, make any sudden movements, and they're dead. Corey simply squinted her eyes at the two intruders, as if they were more of a nuisance than anything else. It wasn't just that, though. It was the fact that they kept rambling on and on, talking about what they were going to do, how they were going to do this, and how they were going to do that. But what really irritated her was how they felt all high and mighty. Yeah, you're really strong men when you're holding a woman and her child hostage. They wouldn't pick that fight with any real shinobi. However, Gato's thugs would persist, the anger beginning to build more and more inside of Cory, especially her eyes. She squinted a bit. She felt a pressure building up. She wasn't entirely sure what it was. But the more they kept talking, they kept irritating until finally she had enough. She focused her eyes on the one to the left and suddenly green laser-like beams would shoot from her eyes, smashing one in the shoulder, knocking him against the wall. The other would be startled and Corey took that to her advantage. Closing the distance between the two of them, she grabbed the hand that had the sword, twisting his wrist and breaking it in an instant. Corey knew that she was stronger than the average person, and unless they had the chakra to match hers, her raw strength alone was more than enough for these clowns. Just as the other one was getting back to his feet, Corey would deliver another strike to his gut, a series of combos rendering him powerless on the ground. The other one with the broken wrist would have a swift kick to the side of his neck, and as such, he would fall to the ground lifeless. 
not dead, but soundly defeated. Both Inari and Tsunami would be grateful to Cory for her help, and after tying them up and making sure they wouldn't cause any trouble, being alerted to what was happening, she immediately panicked as she got dressed and flew out the door. Inari looking on, his face a bright red, watching the orange-skinned girl fly away, flying not only with his gratitude, but maybe even his heart. In the meantime, the battle on the bridge continued to rage. The shinobi weren't letting up, not even for a moment. Shojiro found himself on the back foot against Kisame, surviving an onslaught of attacks. Both Naruto and Sasuke had found themselves getting caught in a rather troublesome technique, that being Haku's crystal ice mirrors, and, for their troubles, they found themselves being pelted with Sinbun. In the meanwhile, Kakashi had his chest sliced in a few times. Because there was no one else here to back him up, he had to work double duty guarding Tazuna and trying to fend off against Zabuza, who only hid in the mist even further, taunting him. The last time we met Kakashi, you said that you could see my death, that you could see into the future with that eye of yours. But you made the mistake of showing your jutsu one time too many. You said you could see the future. <laughs> I only proved that you're nothing more but a false prophet. Overhyped and overrated. And your head's gonna look good on my wall. And that Sharingan, I'll take it as a trophy. If you think you can get past me, Zabuza. But you should know. I don't make the same mistakes twice. If that's the case, then why am I still standing? Don't worry, I plan to rectify that soon enough. Meanwhile, Chojiro stood on the back foot as Kisame continued to swing Samehada, the blade eventually getting close to his shoulder as he pulled back the bandages and the sharp scales of the blade ripping into his shoulder. Samehada feeds well. You've stored up a lot of chakra, eh, little Chojuro? You don't intimidate me, Kisame. This isn't going to end the way you want. One way or another, I will be bringing you down, and I'll be taking Samehada for myself. That's it. That's the selfishness I want to see. It's not about nobility. You just want the blades for yourself, don't you? Even Chojuro would have to grin. I can't deny that. I've always dreamt of the idea that I would be the one to collect all the blades, to master them all and have them in my possession, to surpass all of the swordsmen that came before me, even you. Chojuro's sword would transform the properties of the blade on full display for Kisame as he turned them both into two twin katanas, wheeling them in either hand. Ninja art, dual katana style, hidden miss technique, double title slash! Chojuro would dash towards Kisame, moving the blades in pairs of two as they seemed to circle and dance all around. Just at the last moment, he would spin around with Samehada as the blades were just moments away from taking his head off of his shoulders. Oh yeah, that's what I'm talking about. As Cory would fly closer to the bridge, she could hear the sound of battle. However, her presence would be detected. Kisame could feel it. Another one not too far off. But that chakra potency, oh yeah, that's tail beast chakra for sure. It has to be, it can't be any other way. As Cory descended closer to the bridge, she would see both Naruto and Sasuke trapped within the crystal ice mirrors. Focusing her chakra and amplifying her speed, she would fly faster and faster towards the crystal ice mirrors, eventually in one fell swoop, having enough strength to punch one of them, breaking it free, 
as she would dive inside with the others. Kakashi, while grateful for the added numbers, couldn't help but feel as though she didn't think that plan all the way through. Damn it, Cory. You would have been better off helping me guarding Tazuna. <sighs> Even still, it was better to have some help than none at all. Sasuke would chew her out for being an idiot for just storming in like that. However, with the opening, Naruto would make his way moving out freely, just before Haku could refix the mirror. Although now, she had to deal with the troubles of her decisions, that being Cory, as she now found herself being the one stuck inside of the crystal ice mirrors. Naruto was going to attack from the outside, but Haku was too quick for him. Go help Kakashi Sensei! We'll be all right here! Naruto would look back and nod before taking off. Sasuke and Cory standing back to back, as now they would have to continue on. Although, if she had the strength to shatter the mirrors like that, then maybe they'd have a chance of catching up to Haku. However, Haku would then show them the true meaning of speed, increasing his own to the point where Cory could just barely keep up. Sasuke would activate the Sharingan. Under normal circumstances, if they weren't trapped like this, he could use his wings to fly away and create distance, but even if he tried to whip them out now, he wouldn't have anywhere to go. Naruto, in the meanwhile, would watch on as the fighting commenced all around the bridge. Naruto would move over to the closest place he could help. He would get between Tazuna as Kakashi continued his fight against Zabuza. Zabuza, seeing this, would take the advantage, moving past Kakashi and then aiming directly towards Naruto. Kakashi would try to go after him. However, Kisame, seeing this, would kick Chojuro out of the way before moving in. He figured that if they both teamed up now, they could take out Kakashi in one fell swoop, Kakashi narrowly dodging the swiping attack of Samehada as he would move in to engage with the blade. Zabuza would aim towards Tazuna. With his blade, he could have just enough range he could cleave through Naruto and through the bridge builder. However, Naruto would raise his hands into the air, causing wooden tendrils to emerge through the bridge once again. However, Zabuza was prepared this time. He wasn't about to get caught off guard like he did before. He sliced through all the tendrils with ease, closing the distance between himself and between Naruto and Tazuna. Chojuro, Kori, and Sasuke watched on. Kori would attempt to escape from the crystal ice mirrors, only for Haku to attack her in the blind spot, stabbing her multiple times in the back and causing her to fall to the ground. Sasuke took the moment to try to launch a fireball jutsu, only for Haku to vanish back into the mirrors and attack him from a blind spot once again. Sasuke using his Sharingan, while incomplete, was just barely able to get out of the way in time, as he would try to make another attempt at taking out Haku. Both Kori and Sasuke would be downed, Kori continuing to fight through the pain, as multiple Sinbon were cinched into her back. Haku was careful to stab in areas where the pressure points would be greatest, and Kori could feel her body going limp in certain areas. However, she could watch through the mirrors, watching as Zabuza continued his charge towards Naruto. Naruto would meet Zabuza's great executioner's blade with his own. Zabuza would kick Naruto's arm into the air, kicking him out of the way and moving towards Tazuna. He could finish all of this with one strike. One is all it would take. However, much to his surprise, Naruto caused more wooden tendrils to appear from under the ground of the bridge, bouncing off of them and readjusting his trajectory from where he had been knocked. Tazuna knew he couldn't react in time, the old man preparing to resign himself to his fate. However, Naruto would move him out of the way as the slash aimed directly at his chest.
Naruto could feel a sharp pain surging through his chest and the blood that rushed out afterwards. However, with his last bit of strength, with Zabuza being as close as he was to him, Naruto took the kunai in hand and he aimed it directly at Zabuza's eye. Zabuza would recoil in pain as he fell back. Damn it! Master Zabuza. Haku would watch on, worried for his master's safety. Kakashi, worried for Naruto, would kick back at Kisame. Everything seemed to stand still. As Kori looked on, even at a great distance, her eyesight was clear. Naruto lied on the ground, lying on his back. He wasn't moving. Blood beginning to pour from all around him. No, 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 no. Even Sasuke was startled by the scene, replaying the darkest days that he had experienced in his own mind. All of that blood, the last time he had seen all that blood. No, no, not again, not again. Fighting through everything, Cory would race past everyone, moving to Naruto's side. Naruto, Naruto. <clears throat> Cory, Naruto. It's going to be all right. Don't worry. We'll get you patched up. It'll be okay. <clears throat> Corey. <clears throat> Corey. I'm here. It'll be okay. Naruto. Kakashi looking on as well. Zabuza getting back to his feet. For Kakashi, this couldn't be happening. No. No, Master, no, I won't let your son die here, not like this. Kisame, however, would keep him preoccupied. Kakashi didn't have time for this. He had to move. Kori, I'm, I'm, Naruto? I'm so, I'm so, <laughs> hey, he'll be all right, don't speak, okay, he'll be fine, I need to do something, I, I need to do something, I, I, I don't know what to do, come on, come on, Corey, think, think, you can't be useless, think, come on, in that moment, Corey would think back to those times when the villagers would shun and mock her with the scorn and the hatred and the vitriol. She's a monster. She's a demon child. You're responsible for all of this. You're a monster. She's the devil incarnate. All of the death, everything we've suffered, it's all your fault. It's all your fault. No, Naruto, Corey, it's going to be fine, it'll be okay, I just need, I just need to, I just need to rest, no, no, stay awake, stay awake, you're not supposed to go to sleep, I just feel like I need to sleep, please, no, no, you're going to stay awake, okay? You're not going to go to sleep. Come on, Naruto, stay awake. Please stay awake. Please stay awake. Please don't. Naruto. Corey. It'll be. It'll be. Naruto? Naruto? Naruto, wake up! 
Come on. Come on, this is our first mission outside the village, okay? It's supposed to be a success. Come on, wake up. Come on, when we get home, we can have Ichiraku ramen like you like. Come on, Naruto, please wake up. Please. Please, Naruto. Please wake up. Please. Please. You're my best friend. Don't leave me like this. I don't. I don't. I don't want to be alone. A dark aura would begin to ooze around Corey. Kisame could feel somehow the shaking. That couldn't be mistaken. That was Ninetales' chakra. As Zabuza slowly rose to his feet, a sense of dread washed over him. Fear sweeping him in that moment. I can't move. Why? Why does this feeling of bloodlust? It's as if it's paralyzed my whole body. Hmm. <laughs> So, it seems as though the opportunity has finally shown itself. The girl's resolve has been cracked. <laughs> Let's see how far I can go. You hate them, don't you? He took away your only true love. Will you let that stand, Corey? They all mocked you. They viewed you with nothing but contempt. All the world does is take. Are you going to stand by? Is he not worth avenging? You know what you must do. There is no turning back. The nine tails chakra would ooze from Cory's body, her eyes changing from its emerald glow to a deep dark crimson. The feral eyes of the beast as she looked back towards Zabuza. <sighs> You're going to pay! Do you hear me? Zabuza! Before Zabuza had a chance to react, all he could do was hold up his hands, the girl running on all fours, the swaying tails of the nine tails cloak weighing around her as she lunged towards Zabuza, her fingernails turning into talon-like claws as she scratched at Zabuza's chest, scratching at his face. She punctured and stabbed him. It was as if she were ripping him apart. Haku was attempting to go and save his master, but before he could even move, from out of nowhere, he felt a kick to his face as he looked to see who had done it. An aura was starting to form as well, a bloodlust around Sasuke Uchiha, as both of his eyes bore the two Tomoe Sharingan. You have really pissed me off. Sasuke would fly towards Haku, his black wings going to either side of his back. For Haku, he couldn't tell what was happening in that moment. The dark blood red eyes of the Sharingan piercing his very soul. The black wings that enveloped him. What was he? An angel of death. For Kisame, all of this was more enticing than he could possibly imagine. However, in that moment of letting his guard down, a slash would be formed on his back from Chojuro. Kisame yelled out in anger. However, before he had a chance to react, Chojuro would weave various hand signs. 
Ninja Art, Wire Style, Great Wire Torpedo! The bodies of water surrounding the tube bridge would all envelop around Kisame, smacking into him and shooting him back at a great distance. For Kisame, he was still reeling from the attack that hit him, and Samehara falling into the waters below, going after its master. Haku only had time to look up from the beatdown that Sasuke gave him. And he had just enough time to see it. As Kori, with her clawed hand, stabbed Zabuza in the chest, holding his beating heart. <gasps> Zabuza! Master Zabuza! <sighs> As the life slowly left Zabuza's eyes, he looked into the piercing, cold blooded eyes of Cory. His final words, the last few vestiges that could escape his throat as it filled with his own blood. It was. It wasn't personal. Hearing those words, Corey crushed his heart in her own hands. It was personal to me, you son of a bitch. With that, Zabuza fell to the ground lifeless. The demon of the mist brought to an end. Kakashi had moved to Naruto's side. The wound on his chest was great. Kakashi tried what little medical knowledge he had to repair the wound. Sasuke had joined by Kakashi's side, trying to assist in any way that he could. As Kori pulled her hand from Zabuza's chest, Gato stood on the other side, tapping his cane and laughing. <laughs> wow. The demon of the mist got killed by a girl who had a temper tantrum. Ain't that irony? Corey looked back to Gato. And just who the hell are you? <laughs> I'm what you could say the proprietor of this little shindig. Well, at least I was. I had hired these two to take care of my troubles, but it seems as though they couldn't even manage that. Honestly, you shinobi are something else. You get hired to do one thing, one measly thing, and you can't do it. You find a way to mess it up. Honestly, what's the point of having a tool if it never does what you need it to do? You're like a dumb hoe that can't work in the garden. And trust me, I know a thing or two about dumb hoes. <laughs> Honestly, though, maybe it's for the best. After all, I got tired of his whining and bitching and complaining. I don't get paid. I don't get what I want. Disgraced by his own village and kicked out with no place to go. Nothing but a mere sheepdog running around wagging his tail doing anything for a treat. I mean, honestly, are you Shinobi or are you Tricks? Cuz... It seems like you all enjoy getting pimped out. I mean, seriously. The way he died. Look at him. It's pathetic. You called him the demon of the mist? And that's how he goes out? I mean, for real. Does he have any self-respect? No. Because no self-respecting individual would ever waste their time dressed up like some freak. Some freak with no eyebrows. Can you believe that? 
You go around acting all big and scary with your magic. But really, you're all nothing more but a bunch of worthless waste of space. You're nothing more but a $2 trick. Good for a short time, and then you're off to the curb when I'm done with you. I mean, seriously. This is truly the worst sight I have ever... Before he could continue on any further, his head was sent rolling. Haku, with just enough strength, taking up a sword and slicing off the head of Gato. Gato's men were fearful. However, Haku wasn't going to go any further than that. He walked to the edge of the bridge as he looked back towards Corey and the others. With just enough strength, he used the body flicker, going to Zabuza's body and taking it. However, the glare he gave to Corey before leaving, an ice-piercing glare filled with nothing but vitriol and hatred. Many people knew what type of glare that was, the glare of someone who had lost seemingly everything, everything that was worth their world. When one comes to know love, they also fear knowing the pain of loss. And today, there was loss on both sides. Chojuro managed to collect the executioner's blade but even he felt sorrow for the loss of Naruto. All of that, and for what? In the end, was it even worth it? What was the meaning of going through all of this in the first place? All the same, at the very least, he had done what he had set out to do. He got his hands on one of the legendary swords. As he sealed it up, He, Cory, and Sasuke stood together, looking down at their fallen ally. Naruto's bandages had been wrapped, but he lied on the ground. Kakashi felt he had done everything for the boy, but in the end, it seemed as though it wasn't enough. There was a somber tone in that moment as Tazuna joined with the children. For Corey, the tears just couldn't seem to stop falling. And she was not alone. Despite the victory, it was still a great loss. The people would take time to celebrate, but also mourn. A young man who was a true hero. Someone worthy of all admiration. After the mission was complete, Kakashi wanted to get Naruto's body back to Konoha as soon as possible. They would say their goodbyes as brief as they were. The bridge, while incomplete, a placard was set in place. This would be known as the Great Naruto Bridge. Because through the sacrifice of a child, hope was given to many. Dark clouds rolled over Team 7. Chojuro followed them for a brief time before saying his farewells as he took his leave back to his home village. As they walked through the gates of Konoha, the guards seeing the body being wrapped and Kakashi carrying it. A sinking feeling washed into the pit of their stomachs. When the third Hokage was told what happened, he almost felt as though he had lost a life himself. No, not like this. It can't be. When he went to the coroner's office, seeing Naruto lying on the table. 
a great sadness washed over the third Hokage. Minato, Kushina, I have failed you. A small wake was held. It was private, just for the few who felt close enough to Naruto to attend. When others in his graduating class heard what happened, it cast a dark cloud over them as well. For them, it told them the true horrors of the world. The fact that life could come to an end so quickly, no matter the age. This was not a game. Being a ninja, every day of your life, this was always the potential outcome. Naruto's body was commemorated to the ground. No one questioning why of all places he had his next to the gravestone of the fourth Hokage and his wife. Perhaps it was a sign of respect, but for those that knew, it was far more greater. In the meantime, everyone would take to themselves. This wasn't something that could ever be forgotten. And even more so, it was something that would live with them forever. This is the life of a ninja, a life that is never fair or kind. For all that it gives, it takes just as much, if not more so. Many don't live to tell the tales. And those that survive, they carry on the memories of the fallen. However, is death really the end? Or is it simply a new beginning, a rebirth, a chance for things to be made new? At the headstone of Naruto Uzumaki, under the grass, a small flower would begin to rise, a bud waiting to bloom. As deep under the earth, a conversation was being held. A young boy walking through dark halls and corridors. He does not feel any wound on his chest, even though he knows he had been hurt. As he continues his walk, he arrives towards a great cage. Not so much a cage, but trees. Trees that align to form a cage of sorts with a warning sign for him not to enter. As he walks closer to the door, as if just wanting to peer into the darkness, a voice can be heard. It is not time for you to open that door, Naruto Uzumaki. Who said that? You know very well, the one who has been with you from the very beginning. You, you're the being that's been sealed inside of me. Where am I? Am I dead? Not quite. At least, not yet. You and I need to have a conversation. And that conversation will determine your fate. How long is it going to take? Don't worry. We have all the time in the world. Naruto would take a seat in front of the wooden cage. What was beyond it, he could not see, although it appeared as though it led into a forest, a forest of darkness, one of which that he could not discern. However, the voice from the forest was commanding all the same. 
I am Kodama. I have been here from the beginning of mankind's history. Although there are many things I do not know myself. But I am not important right now. I want to know about you, about me. Yes, I want to know about you. And that will determine your fate. So choose your words wisely. Naruto Uzumaki. This concludes Naruto King of the Beast. What if Naruto was Swamp Thing? Season 1, Part 6, the Season 1 Finale. As always, when we come to the end of the series, I want to say thank you to everyone who has supported this new story here on the channel. It's definitely one of the more ambitious crossovers I've done here on the channel, but the reception has been great. You guys have really been enjoying it, so I see a season two in this story's future, where a lot more journeys and challenges will be faced by Naruto and friends along the way as he continues to rise to being King of the Beast. But as always, thank you for enjoying today's video. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share, and hit that bell for post notifications so you can stay up to date on everything that's Power Core Productions and Podcastings. That's going to do it for the end of today's video. I'm Javon Harrington signing off, and I'll see you next time.